your future is created by what you do today not tomorrow so today is very very important and this is exactly which i'm talking about and working on the series called time management you must have seen five sessions so far in this series very important series because i always see time management is equal to life management welcome once again to my youtube channel thank you very much for all your support let us get into the next session session 6 we are going to look at the session 6 in little detail let us start with the components of time management there are components of planning organizing delegating making actually taking stock and making corrections scheduling and prioritizing these we are going to look at in detail so let us start with planning it is all about drawing a plan or things which supposed to supposed to be done and by when what are the time duration for that right so for effective planning it is important to know what is urgent and what is important right urgent tasks assume importance as they demand immediate attention however you should bear in mind that important tasks can become urgent in your life right if it is not done so always give your attention to the important task otherwise they will become urgent so how can you gauge or how can you balance between important and urgent try to find out what is the impact if i get the task done and what if i don't get the task done and one of the best way to decide urgent versus important task is the balance between them is use of stephen cohen's urgent versus important matrix so try to find out this matrix which will help you to maintain the balance because there will be things will coming to hitting you these are important these are urgent where you go how do i maintain the balance right next one is organizing it's an important component of time management so when you are become better organized you become a better person you become a disciplined person so you don't waste time and you focus on times and and you focus on things which are very very important so how do we organize what are the steps the steps of setting up the goals making the priorities and then when you do a lot of actions for 21 days it is said that forms good habits so setting of goals we said the goals have to be specific smart measurable actionable trackable and obviously these must be in line with your purpose then you must put a priority based on the what comes first and make sure that you have the priorities organized in a proper way as i said when you do this that habit becomes the way of your life the self discipline the the focused approach comes and that becomes your habit you start working or you start living you know in that fashion setting of goals prioritizing and then working on it and that will create a better habit for your life the third one is delegation there are things which you are not supposed to do there are people who are supposed to be doing that and you must be able to find out it's an art because people feel that everything and everything i can do nobody else can do i can do it better than him so you don't give it that work to him that fellow remains cycle you start doing everything you don't have time so it is very important to find out which are the things which you can delegate rather than thinking that you are the more ef most efficient delegation is a task delegation is an important aspect of time management which will give you a lot of time for yourself right so what are the element of delegation that there are three things one is authority responsibility and accountability authority can be defined is the power which you have uh, you know to allocate your resources efficiently take decision give orders so this is an authority which comes from organizations or your positions in the organizations so people with authority should know the scope of their authority and that generally authority flows from top to bottom so this authority will tell you how to utilize your resources and this is the first step to give or to do delegation second is responsibility right authority should be accompanied with equal responsibility delegating the authority to someone 
doesn't imply escape pain from your accountability. Accountability will still rest with the person at most authority. So all the authorities comes with responsibility. So if I am an I am superior and I am delegating the task to a gentleman, the responsibility still lies with me. I am accountable, not that gentleman. Getting the work done is my job. So I am responsible and I am not accountable for the outcome. But how I get it done through a delegation by using the authority. But as I said, authority comes with responsibility as well as accountability. So responsibility are the duties, the roles which uh, everybody has to perform. As I said, responsibility comes uh, with the authority. Responsibility comes from top to down. The person held responsible for a job is answerable for it. Accountability means you are the person who is going to give explanations for doing that things not properly or there are variants or you are deviating from that thing. You are accountable. Accountability cannot be delegated. I can delegate a task but I cannot delegate my accountability. The importance of delegation. Delegation is one of the important time management skills. Delegation is nothing but internal outsourcing. You don't have to go out, out the people who are there, you would just delegate them. Poor delegation will cause a lot of frustration, you know, and it will create tension in yourself as well as the people who are, who are working you. They're supposed to work, they are not being working, right? Good delegation saves you a lot of time, as I said. It develops your dream because they also start getting more and more productive, more and more, you can say, expert in doing that things. So the the main purpose of delegation is you can look at the big picture and start getting the work done from your teams. They also become more efficient, more effective and the master of that thing while the big picture lies with you. Right? So poor delegation actually will create a lot of confusion, chaos, stress in everybody's mind. So let us look at one of the flow chart for delegation. So look at this. Do this need to be done? No. Then you should resist and stop. If you want to do that thing, does it need to be done by you? If no, then start finding out the, the person you can delegate it. If yes, does it need to be done now? If it is yes, then do it. So this is a very, very simple chart that whether it is required, if not, then just say no. If it is required and it can be done only by you, then you have to answer another question that is required now, then do it. If it is not to be done by you, can you delegate, then find someone and get that work done from him. So these are steps of effective delegation. Step number one is clarifying your goals and opportunities. Decide what goals and projects that can be done by others. You have to find out. Second number two. Step number two. Step number three is selecting the right person. Step number four is Organize the task being delegated. Step number five, set clear instruction. Give a clear instruction what is to be done, when is to be done, and how is to be done. Step number six, set the deadlines. Step number seven, support and monitor. Just don't throw them and relax. You have to support and monitor. And step number eight, which is very important, is recognize. When the things get done, you have to call him and recognize. Maybe in front of many so that he feels motivated he will be becoming more and more productive next time though the next thing is managing interruptions so there are things when you do work on your job you find a lot of distractions coming in somebody will knock your door somebody will come and stand in, the, in front of you he wants everything to be done now you are doing something else how do we do this right so let us look at how do we do that first is how do I manage my workspace? So please make sure your desk is clear, your inbox is clear, the files are properly document, your system flow is very, very clear, your mobile is also clutter free. That is how you can manage your workspace. So you are very clear about what is your what is the thing which you want to focus on. So when you try to focus on a lot of clutter comes in, remove that clutter. Starts with your desk. Managing document. Define what you need to keep and how long. Don't just file your documents that you'll never look at for years and years, right? Arrange your filing properly. Even in your 
desktops or laptop keep those properly logically so that you are able to you know take out whenever it is required as i said easy access and purge the files on a regular basis just go on revisiting this and then you purge out the files very very important managing drop in visitors this is a common problem where you are doing something someone comes in so create a visual barrier at your workspace to reduce the drop in visits don't have extra chairs in your workspace difficult but we can try for important work move to another space don't sit in your cabin the people will go and knock on your doors and come in right and very very important thing this we have to adopt say no in a polite way i'm busy please give me some time this will actually make lot of change the next distraction comes your phone how do i do that batch your outward calls delegates that call which you don't have to do. you can ask your team members to call them and then take feedback later there are a lot of calls which are non productive start blocking those right and set up a rotation of team members for your team for handling incoming calls sometimes if you have good team with you we can they can we can delegate to see what are those incoming calls phone is the biggest distraction in our life now so there are many dis- this there are many interruptions which can happen over socializing on job telephone we have seen poorly run meetings meetings go on go on and on there is no control right drop in visitors and waiting delays or could be ineffective delegations then comes scheduling understanding the things properly with sequencing so you know what task to be done and which can be done later which how much lead how much lags you are able to understand how the flow works rather than doing the things which are not required now right a lot of time is wasted which will not which will not give a right result hence we must know what are the sequence from the sequence we can find out the priorities there are many other ways of finding out the priorities which activities more important than which not activity a activity b you can put your time uh, you can brainstorm find out the priorities and make sure that priorities are listed in front of you and you take actions accordingly how to prioritize a task as i said what i am doing there are some questions which you need to answer what i am doing that doesn't really need to be done what i am doing that could be done by someone else what i am doing that could be done more efficiently what are the cost versus benefit of doing these activities how will these activities fit into my goals answer these questions you can get your tasks your actions prioritized easily this is one of the things which you can which can help to prioritize your task right which activity is more important more than the other answer this question for both these activities and you can prioritize your task you can answer you can get more questions do this activity have a deadline for completion how much i do i enjoy doing this activity have i promised or agreed to do this activity which of my needs will be satisfied by doing this activity how much time does this activity require for completion these some of the questions can help you to prioritize your activity very very important information given to you always remember the real time is mental sometimes we feel that time is flying fast sometimes waiting you know while waiting you feel the time is not going by time is not going by it is created by your time and your brain so anything that you have created yourself you can manage yourself so the best way to manage your time is being positive about yourself and believing that you are capable of managing your time with this tip i conclude my session and i request you to subscribe my channel follow me on youtube facebook linkedin and i just got it the links are there in front of you the links are also in the description box thank you so much